Now for our story. The fog had rolled in in the early morning. It blotted out the landscape, making a gray, opaque world. Even the sound of the surf running up on the beach sounded muffled. Upstairs in her room of the house she's sharing with Kip Mead, Lisa Fenner was lying down, looking out at the fog. She experienced a peaceful sensation of being shut in, secure. She sighed contentedly, closed her eyes. Paul and Kit, such good friends. Her mind trailed off. Mrs. Fenner was asleep. And downstairs in the living room, Paul Cromwell and Mrs. William Mead are sitting side by side on the couch. Kit is staring gloomily straight ahead. Paul looks at her speculatively for a moment, then reaching into his coat pocket, takes out a cigarette case. Cigarette, Kit? No, thanks. Why the silence all of a sudden? Do you realize that you stopped talking in the middle of a sentence and you haven't said anything for nearly a minute? I got tired. It's too much effort. Mind if I smoke? No. Would you rather I went on home, Kit? Oh, no. Well, would you like to take a little walk? Stop off at my place and get Max to fix us something special in the way of a drink for a foggy day? Uh, no, thanks. Just the same. Backgammon? A card? Oh, stop it, Paul. I don't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind, Kit? It's this infernal waiting. The same thing that's always on my mind. Three more months, Paul. I know, darling. It's rough. Maybe you're lonesome for Bill. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me today. I think it's the fog. It's so depressing. Yes, it is. I feel pretty low myself. What do you have to worry about? Has it skipped your mind that there's a young woman upstairs by the name of Mrs. Lisa Fenner? Have you forgotten that Lisa thinks she'd like to marry me? Just behave yourself and everything will run very smoothly for you. Well, a little too smoothly. I'm not so sure I want to give up my freedom. It was your suggestion, you know, Kit, that I make up to Lisa. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was your idea. Remember for a time you thought it might be very pleasant and homey to settle down with Lisa? To marry her after she gets a divorce? Hmm, I... I never did really mean that seriously. It just seemed a, you know, pleasant diversion, that's all. I see. Well, I'd say you were handling the whole thing beautifully. You show her enough affection, not too much. But don't commit yourself, darling. You know the old theory. Always leave an opening so you can jump away. <laughs> Get you to have made a fine Medici. You're quite a little schemer, aren't you? If so, I come by it naturally. My father's no mean hand at dealing with people. I'd certainly hate to have you for an enemy. Oh, I'm not nearly so devious as you think. But look here, Kit. To return to this business of Lisa, you said the other day that if she gave up the child for adoption... Well, wouldn't that simplify everything? But it's so utterly fantastic. You know how much she wants the child. Oh, she may change her mind. I'd like to know exactly what's in your mind. I'm not too sure myself at the moment. Just a possible plan. Is that all the answer I get? It's all I can give you at the moment. I want to help you, Paul, but I may not be able to. It all depends on a number of things. Mm, such as? Well, such as... Uh... I'll get it. Hello. Mrs. William Mead. Who's calling, please? Wakefield is calling Mrs. William Mead. Is she there? Oh, just a moment, please. Oh, it's for you, Kit. Oh? Long distance from Wakefield. Here you are. Thanks. Hello? Mrs. Mead? Yes? One moment, please. I have your party. You may go ahead now. Hello? Hello, Kit? Oh, this is a surprise. Uh, how are you? Uh, hold on a minute, will you... Excuse me, Paul, if I shut the door. Oh, certainly. What is it, Bill? What's the matter? Why, nothing. I just want to talk to you, Kit. How nice. I'm flattered. Well, I haven't heard from you in over a week. I know, darling. I've been very bad about writing, but there isn't much to tell. Yeah, but you know how worried I am. Are you? Of course I am. How are you feeling? What does the doctor say? Oh, a lot of things that are supposed to be most encouraging. Oh, I see. You're still pessimistic, huh? Bill... I've told you time and time again, I don't dare hope that the child will be... Do you? 
Well, naturally, kid. I hope with all my heart that the baby's fine. Well, can't the doctor give you any idea? Of course not. Well, do you like him? Yes, well enough. I... We aren't doing very well, are we? Well, I'd just as soon not spend this time talking about my health and the baby. What have you been doing with yourself, Bill? Oh, same old thing. Been seeing many people? No, kid. Your father's been by to talk with me once or twice. Wants me to give him your address. Well, I don't want him to have it. I don't want Dad stepping into this mix-up with his fine Italian hand. Seems very strange. I mean, at the house. <laughs> you mean you're constantly reminded of him? Well, darling, you should have quite a few memories. I have. And how are you feeling about everything? Oh, look, kid, let's not go into that over the phone right now, huh? Oh, it doesn't upset me to talk about it. Have you changed your mind? Or is everything just the same? Just the same. Still Peggy Douglas? Well, the main issue is between you and me, kid. It has nothing to do with Peggy. It's just that you and I... Well, we aren't right for each other. Oh? Well, you said yourself when you left that you realized there had to be some changes made. That's right, darling. There'll be quite a few changes made when I get back. Kit, you know I... Your time is up. Huh? Oh, all right. Uh, just a minute. Well, goodbye, Bill. It was sweet of you to call. Yeah. Well, you'll take care of yourself, won't you, Kit? Yes, Bill. I'll take care of myself. Oh, well, bye. Goodbye. That was Bill. I had an answer, was. Did you give him my best? No, Bill doesn't know you're in California, Paul. Nor that I'm seeing you. Oh, really? Hmm, that's not a very honest attitude for a devoted wife to take. So, Bill doesn't know I'm out here. That's a very provocative statement. Kit, are you really so happy with Bill? Well, he's sweet and nice and all that, but... But... Life's a little on the dull side, eh? Yes. I'm getting bored. I'm not surprised. I told you that from the beginning. I must say, Kip, this is a fine time to let me in on it. I asked you weeks ago to tell me how things stood between you and Bill, and you know why I asked you. You deliberately encouraged the situation between me and Lisa. Oh, Paul, don't take on so. For your sake, it's certainly smarter for Lisa to feel that I'm out of the picture. And I am, of course. Just because I'm fed up with Bill doesn't mean that things are going to be any different between you and me. But couldn't they be? Isn't there a remote possibility? Oh, perhaps a very remote one. That's all I needed to know. I'm going to simplify things around here, kid. I'm not going to get caught in any whirlpool. It's touch and go with Lisa. I certainly don't want to get involved with her. Paul, dear, I suggest that you continue showing Mrs. Fenner the same devoted attentiveness as you've been doing. If you want things to run smoothly. I wish I could get something definite out of you. Talking with you is like boxing with a feather. You seem so sanguine, so sure about everything. And yet you leave me completely in the dark. For heaven's sake, what plan do you have in the back of that head of yours? To make things work out satisfactorily, Paul. For all concerned. Do you mean for all concerned, Kit? Or just for yourself? Since you confessed your domestic difficulties to Miss Cromwell, why didn't you tell him the straight story instead of the lie that you were bored with Bill? It might be a good idea for us to remember something you said earlier. It was always wise to leave an opening so one could jump in any direction. Is that what you're doing, Kit? Protecting yourself for any eventuality? 